welcome. Hello? Did you just speak to me? This experiment is designed to advance our understanding of evolution. By participating, you help us gather data needed to create more accurate simulations. That's kind of cool. Do you consent? Here's the thing. Considering some of the other stuff that I've evolved on this channel, you probably don't want to use me in this data set. I'm, I'm waiting for you to come to your senses, strange little geometric lady. I don't care how much you need my help, okay? You're gonna be like the Na'vi of this game, aren't you? What's up, guys? Welcome to Cell to Singularity, a game that I think is gonna be really similar to something like Big Bang Evolution, or Homo Evolution, or really any of those evolution games you guys have been enjoying on the channel recently, except this'll be good. You know, those mobile games, they are addictive, they're fun, but they're inherently kind of simple and crap. Whereas this is a PC game that looks like it has a lot of effort put into it. Now, the geometric shape with the seductive voice didn't really explain how we were supposed to evolve life on a molten rock that's two doors down from the sun. But who am I to disagree, right? I would just assume that if she says I can, then I can collect some entropy. Use entropy to buy evolution upgrades. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to give a TED talk about every single thing that pops up, but I think this is going to be a little bit more scientific than the stuff that we're used to. How would you describe entropy? It's like the state of disorder that everything wants to naturally return to. So if we collect entropy, we can then use it to buy planet Earth. Wait, what? Planet Earth. Earth provides a mixture of chemicals, an abundance of water, and an atmosphere that's perfect for developing life. So that flaming turd in space that I was clicking on wasn't Earth. Oh, that's gonna make things way easier, right? Yeah, we can go ahead and get the primordial soup. A solution rich in organic compounds believed to set the conditions for life. That's what I'm talking about. And then if we get enough entropy, we can even buy a moon. Oh, come on, who sells you a planet without a moon? I think the old saying goes, nobody can hear you complain in space, but I feel the need to point out that I just paid a whole bunch of entropy for planet Earth, and I'm not seeing planet Earth anywhere. <laughs> Unless this is planet Earth, in which case I just bought a planet that I already had, I was gypped out of a moon, and it was blatant false advertising, right? It's all blue and lively in the photo. I'm willing to bet that instead of finding a planet that's suitable for life, I'm supposed to create life that will then make that planet suitable. You know what I mean? Like, well, we'll do a little bit of biological terraforming. What if I start with uh, amino acids? Atoms and molecules bond together to create these raw materials of life. Sounds like as good a place to start as any. Amino acids are the building blocks of life. Ooh, life created. Okay, it's not quite alive, but you know what? Screw it. Like, creating amino acids within spitting range of the sun is still impressive. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. Every life you buy earns more background entropy production. Okay, so you're gonna go and hang out in the primordial ooze and earn me a little bit of entropy? Interesting. Holy crap, there is so much more to this game than I would have expected. So we can get protein, which will make our DNA more efficient, but to do that we would need DNA, right? We would need nucleotides. And then the moon does what exactly? The gravitational forces exerted by the moon and the sun and the rotation of Earth turn the tides of the ancient oceans to advance life. Holy crap. I really like this. This is way cooler than anything else I've played. And Earth looks great. We're finally getting somewhere. As much as it pains me to pay extra for the moon, or you buy a planet, you buy the moon. Everybody knows that. I'm still gonna do it because it's gonna up our tap gain, and that sounds very useful. The moon is born when a Mars-sized object hits the young Earth. Ooh, hold up, are we gonna see that? Oh no, okay, it's already happened. <laughs> Time passes, but we do have a little moon floating around us. Very cool. Oh yeah, that was definitely worth it. <laughs> Thank you, Moon. I will do my very best to protect you from Piccolo. What the hell is that? I didn't pay for that, did I? Are you mutating? What did you become? Quantum charge. Trigger this quantum charge to earn evolution. Okay, why 
not. That would be why not. Okay, you know what? In all fairness, it is a free-to-play game with no ads, so I'll give them credit. It is perfectly reasonable for somebody to spend $20 on 800 cubes of Darwinium. Oof. I think for now, I'm just gonna stick to clicking. Okay, I've evolved nucleotides, and that should let me evolve DNA, a molecule with the unique property of self-replication. DNA's infinite configurations forms the foundation of all evolutionary changes. Now we're getting somewhere. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey! I can't wait to see what kind of messed up life I'm gonna create. It might be very accurate. We might get, like, legitimate cellular creatures or we might get complete abominations. I'm not ruling that out yet. So if I was gonna create life, I would need DNA. I would probably want RNA as well. Messengers of genetic code. RNA is responsible for transferring genetic code from the nucleus to ribosomes to make proteins. Yep, that sounds very helpful. And then we can also get proteins because we gotta send that message somewhere. The building blocks of living life proteins are molecules made from long chains of amino acids. Boom. Got it. And we can get ourselves a prokaryotic cell if we just click a little tiny bit. The Earth may be made up of a whole lot of water, but you know what? It's still a dirty girl deep down. It loves getting the two fingers rapidly tapping inside of it. No, no, moon, go away. Okay, mom and dad are busy. The prokaryotic cell, the first living organism. These unicellular organisms paved the way for the rest of life to begin. Oh, baby. <laughs> the first signs of life bubble up in the primordial soup. This is awesome. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you probably shouldn't have been cross-sectioned. That can't be good for your likelihood of survival floating around here with the DNA and your amino acids, and where'd you go? Where'd you go, little guy? Get, get, get back up here, I wanna take a look at you, young man! How dare you run from me? Whoa! Viruses, bacteria, nucleus, mitochondria, mitosis, plasma membranes, there's so many scientific things to do! I think I'm gonna do my best to avoid viruses for now. Technically, it says they make prokaryotic cells 50% more efficient, but if I make eukaryotic cells, they don't mix too well. <laughs> I really don't want to start an arms race between the two right now, so how about we get uh, bacteria, unicellular microorganisms that have cell walls, but none of the organelles that make up multicellular organisms. Okay, you know what? One step at a time, we'll get to multicellular eventually. We'll get some plasma membranes. The plasma membrane protects the interior of cells from the environment. All right. We get mitosis, the ability of cells to divide into more similar cells. This process was help single cell organisms multiply and hopefully become multicellular. Yeah, one cell would turn into more. That makes some sense. Ah, I'm a, running a little low on entropy though. What do we get mitochondria? The, <laughs> the powerhouse of the cell. I was going to say that as a joke, but they, they beat me to it, damn it. <laughs> mitochondria are an organelle that converts glucose to energy. Perfect. Then the nucleus, the cell's control center, it contains the chromosomes that house DNA. Ooh. Oh, it's saving in the background, is it? I'm pretty sure that's the foreground. I can't imagine spinning the planet around randomly like this is very good for it, or the life that I'm trying to create. Right, anything down there right now would be like, daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime. But I wanted to point out that the Earth is very different. Right, we have mostly ocean, and then one giant supercontinent. Very Pangea-esque. I'm curious if that's gonna change over time. Maybe we can start changing things right now with a little eukaryotic life. Is everybody behaving down there? You guys ready for another little, another big brother or sister? Considering eukaryotic life is multicellular, isn't it? The prokaryotic cell's more complex cousin formed by the symbiotic unification of several prokaryotic cells. Ooh, make it happen. Yeah, there we go. I, again, I want to make life that isn't pre-cross-sectioned. I can't imagine it's very good for it. <laughs> this is less so life and more so, you know, life's dioramas floating around. Uh, I don't know what I did, but that thing just came very close to smashing into us. That was a little concerning. Why have I zoomed out all of a sudden? I'm just gonna assume that the sun didn't really appreciate the whole nighttime daytime joke. 
<laughs> but I think now I can get my Tosis, and then that should make my clicks worth a whole lot more. Oh yeah, that's where the real money, the real entropy is from. I feel like I should probably do these in order. Like, I don't want to get asexual reproduction and have a bunch of eukaryotic cells reproducing without tissues or without cytoplasm or the ability to eat. So we'll go ahead and get tissue first. Groups of cells come together to achieve a specific function. Cool. We'll get cytoplasm, all of the materials that are contained inside of a cell membrane, except for the nucleus. Whoa, oh, cool. I get some Darwinium. Hey, thank you, appreciate it. We can use that somewhere, can't, uh, where'd the, the gold thing go? Oh, really? Now you're gonna take off? I see how it is. I have two eukaryotic cells now. Oh, 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 there it is. Hey, how are you? Uh, trigger quantum, sure. Oh, it just gave me 3,000, that, that's nothing. I gotta click that in seconds. Damn, I should've been paying attention. <laughs> Two getting hopped up on being God here. Uh, yeah, we'll go with filter feeding. A passive way of finding nourishment by having nutrients filter through an organism's body. The method of choice for clams, krill, and sponges. So are we gonna, oh, now we can evolve a sponge. I've never been so excited for a sponge. That's definitely on the list of things that I did not expect to say today. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and create multicellular life. The world's first multicellular organism. These stationary filter feeders are a product of multiple eukaryotic cells coming together. One becomes the many. The first multicellular organism emerges. Oh, this is cool. So now... We have an ocean that we can fill with creatures? Where did you go, my little sponge? <laughs> I'm gonna name you Sammy the Sponge! So if I were to evolve asexual reproduction now, would it be cellular asexual reproduction? Or would it be organism asexual reproduction? Right, similar to mitosis, asexual reproduction is the process where an entire organism is produced from a single parent. So would Sammy the Sponge be able to turn into multiple Sammy the Sponges and just cover the entire ocean? I know that I can buy more of them. I, I noticed that it says times one producing 20 per second, but I can buy a bunch of them. Right now, I would much rather get myself a jellyfish. Soft-bodied, free-swimming aquatic animals with a gelatinous umbrella-shaped bell and trailing tentacles. Life leaves the ocean floor and the journey begins. <laughs> Oh, I really like this, especially because we are on the path to creating things that are way cooler than a jellyfish. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it right now, I'm pretty sure you can make, like, dinosaurs and humans and then whatever comes after humans. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Cell to Singularity, guys. And it's like I said, we're only just getting started. You know, we covered the basis of life. We have made it so that the Earth is now inhabitable. But what it's gonna be inhabited by, I have no idea. But I'm really interested in finding out. So if you guys wanna see this become a series, I would love to see a game like this do as well as Homo Evolution did. Because Homo Evolution was funny and dumb, and this is not quite as funny, but not quite as dumb. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.